this is organized crime and there's specialization in those subsegments of this organized crime now you've finalized a way out a number the board's decided we're going to pay because we cannot afford that we're getting two minutes to midnight business disruptions too critical we're going to lose our reputation our stakes our stakeholder engagement everything what happens when you go all right we're going to pay up yeah and this is again it's another thing usually when we're doing sort of crisis simulations and stepping boards through that they hadn't considered again because they've not had to deal with this one of the first things is we, after the invasion in ukraine we have a lot of entities that are sanctioned and you've got to be really careful that you don't inadvertently pay a sanctioned entity and you can't identify whether or not that entity is sanctioned until we get what's called the bitcoin wallet so basically the bank account details the electronic bank account details we're going to pay into if all of that passes and i've not yet seen a risk of paying a sanctioned entity thankfully in, in all the negotiations we've done but you've got to understand that you have to pay the money up front if you have cyber insurance they won't pay the ransom but you'll have to pay if it's half a million bucks whatever into into someone's wallet usually ransomware negotiation firms and what have you will allow you to transfer money into their account they will then transfer it into bitcoin once you send the bitcoin to the threat actors it takes about six to 12 hours kind of like a direct transfer from banks for it to process the blockchain takes about that long to update and the threat actor will wait until the blockchain is updated to a certain point before they will confirm that the transfer has completed because in years gone by we used to wait till it had updated a certain amount and then we'd re we'd retract it and we knew the threat actor would pay it give us the decryptor and then we could return the money but they obviously got wise to that they're an evolving business and they don't allow that anymore next so we pay the money the threat actor has acknowledged receivement of those funds there can be a delay between getting the decryptor i have found a couple of days waiting for decryptor i've found that the initial decryptor they've given us didn't work and i've got to go back to them almost like an it support help desk for help on using their decryptor for their files or i've found that the decryptor they've given us is really slow we've gone from maybe it's a couple of days worth of negotiation and we've a couple of days worth of time to pay and get the decryptor and now we're looking at weeks to decrypt the data just because of how poorly written this thing is in almost all cases the systems will not come back online perfectly there's always going to be need to be some level of repair you don't have to burn them to the ground restart everything from scratch i've seen a lot of it guys race to do that if containment and eradication is done properly that's not necessary but there's still a chance that some parts of your systems will need repair some of them may need to be reloaded and we often find unfortunately a lot of the ransomware is written in a way that things like large database files just when they're encrypted that they corrupt and so even when they decrypt there's no recovery of them and this means that we've often seen the full system recovery take weeks or months to do after the business has made that decision to, to pay a ransom that needs to feed into that previous discussion of are we going to pay it 